This exchange between Bush and uh, Trump. I mean, you know, here's the thing about Jeb Bush, right? He's got a a, a, a hundred million dollar pack behind him, um, and he is polling now in single digits. And I get that we are still months away, but there was not. I went back and looked at some of the polls from from two thousand the two thousand twelve election. And yep. um, and Mitt Romney, who ended up being the nominee, was never in single digits. The last time he was in single digits was in May, uh, May 6th of 2011, in only one poll. There, in, in May, there was almost uh, over a dozen polls taken. And he was only uh, under 10% in one poll, the Zogby poll. That's in May right. of 2011. The rest, in, in the month of May, 19%, 16%, 22%. Didn't he always lead in New Hampshire, too? I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's hard to remember now, but I don't feel like he ever... I mean, oh, what, well, New Hampshire was special yeah. because he was from Boston, and so he had that. But then in, in June— No, but, true, but August, Jeb, you know, Jeb has to you know, be doing well in one of those early states. I know it was, a, it was right. more of a home playing field for Mitt, although Jeb does have the family in Kennebunkport, which ain't that far from New Hampshire, but, um, and the family's from Connecticut and the rest of it. Okay, so you could say that that's sort of stretching it. But the point is, is that in both of those fir first two states, he's being crushed right now. And that's the reality of the situation. It just does not look like, I mean, if you even go back to 2010, the guy was in double digits. He was never in single digits. He was as much as the Republican base hated Mitt Romney. <laughs> he was never this as, as sort of, it seemingly sort of universally hated as Jeb Bush. And there's just no place where you find where he gets his votes. I mean, you can add up like all the other non-Trump, non-Carson, non-Cruz voters. And, and even if every single one of those voters congeals around Jeb Bush, he still uh, doesn't even reach, I think, like 45 percent. And this is yep. and, and, and here is why. Uh, it seems to me, because this goes directly to the idea that the Republicans don't care about at all about uh, policy. It's because Donald Trump is just slapping this guy around and Jeb Bush just looks anemic. And, yep. um, you know, I, and it, I think that, you know, and if he were going to pick up, if we were saying, oh, well, these establishment votes w would be going his way. Right. You know, I mean, Scott Walker has literally cratered in the last month and a half or so. And Jeb hasn't picked up anything. Nothing. You know, I mean, he's, if, if anything, he's lost yep. uh, something. So that vote that was some of the, that had, theoretically had to be establishment people went to Kasich and, you know, for, for example, and went to, to other places. They clearly didn't go to him. You know, I mean, he just he's, he's not he's really a bad candidate. I mean, there's no getting around the fact that he's a terrible debater. You know, he, he, he is out there. He's been pegged, as, whether, you know, fair or not. And you could maybe say it's not fair that, that this, his family name is at this point poison in the, among the Republican base. Um, and um, there are some legitimate reasons for that, obviously. And there's some that are just because the base is crazy and consider them to be liberals. Right. Um, and so, I mean, he's, he's up against it already. I mean, I, what I don't get is, and you just wonder how the, you know, these guys ever learn how to play this game, you know, which is the only, the, the, the point is that when they're sitting there hoarding all of this money, what is that for? I mean, the whole point is if he doesn't make it to the third primary, it doesn't matter. And I don't see where he gets the votes either, no matter how much money he spends. But I still don't get why, when his, when his numbers weren't going anywhere, these guys didn't start spending a lot of money in, in Iowa and in New Hampshire and in D.C. to at least, you know, to, uh, to try to alter the kind of uh, congealing conventional wisdom about him to get sort of a lot of the opinion makers there and others to start saying more positive things. I mean, it can't hurt, right? You've got 100 million in, in a Two in a words, super two words for you. Eric Cantor. I mean, just as blind as <laughs> Eric Cantor was to what was going on in his tiny little district. I just don't think that these, uh, you know, these uh, t these uh, Republican establishment have any idea of who who the Republican Party is anymore. Here is Donald Trump. Uh, here's George Bush. I mean, Jeb Bush demanding that Donald Trump apologize to his wife. Stop I love being this mean to my wife. Here it is. Governor Bush. Mr. Trump has suggested that your views on immigration are influenced by your Mexican-born wife. Now, pause wife. it. 
pause it for a second. We should also say that in Jeb Bush's own book, he attributes his views on immigration to his Mexican born wife. So it's not, you know, I mean, I, I you can't really get all up in arms about and that. You know what? If, uh, yeah, that's look. I mean, that's the way that Republicans develop empathy. It has to affect right. them directly. They right? need to know it's somebody strickland. from a specific, if they have a gay son, they're exactly. in favor of gay marriage. Exactly. You know, exactly. if somebody's so, got in a drunk driving accident, they want to reform those laws. It's exactly right. Republicans right. only can have empathy if something's actually happened directly to them and their family. Right. And so here's the question. He said that, quote, if my wife were from Mexico, I think I would have a soft spot for people from Mexico. Did Mr. Trump go too far in invoking your wife? He did. He did. Um, you're proud of your family, just as I am, Correct. to subject my wife into the middle of a raucous political conversation was completely inappropriate. And I hope you apologize for that, Donald. Well, I have to tell you, I hear phenomenal things. I hear your wife is a lovely woman. She is. I she's don't fantastic. know her. And this she is, is a total She is absolutely the love of my life, of and she's right here. And why don't Good. you apologize Good. for her No, I won't right do that now. because I said nothing yeah. wrong, but I do hear so she's a lovely woman. So here's the deal. My wife is a Mex Mexican-American. She's an American by choice. She loves this country as much as anybody in this room. And she wants a secure border, but she wants to embrace the traditional American values that make us special and make us unique. We're at a crossroads right now. Are we going to take the Reagan approach, the hopeful, optimistic approach, the approach that says that you come to our country legally, you pursue your dreams with a vengeance, you create opportunities for all of us, or the Donald Trump approach? The approach that and, uh, says that everything is bad, that everything is coming to an end. I, Mr. Trump, I'm Jeb on the Reagan side of this. That they come into our country as an act of love. With all of the problems that we have in so many instances, we have wonderful people coming in. But with all of the problems, this is not an act of love. He's weak on immigration. By the way, in favor of Common Core, which is also a disaster. <laughs> but weak on immigration, he doesn't get my vote. There you go. And uh, he's not just and, it, you know, I, I think I, I got to say, can I hit something quickly? Go. I love I love how Trump talks about his wife like she's one of his business projects or mm -hmm. talks about uh, Bush's wife. I've heard phenomenal things, phenomenal things about her. Yeah, I, I, I'd buy. I go. She's going up in the poll. Exactly. I mean, it's. I mean, it's, it's he, he takes that and he basically Trump, says, like, I'd be happy to date way. your wife. I mean, it's basically saying, like, <laughs> yeah, it's basically what he's saying. It's like, you know, look. I'm sure she's wonderful, and uh, if she wants a real man, I mean, this is the thing. This is the dynamic that's playing out here, and and Trump, I think, very uh, shrewdly, and you know, um, I, less you know, people should remember that I think uh, Trump is a despicable person, uh, but he is really helping America here. It seems to me. Uh, no, he, is, he is a despicable person, but I, I still have to admit I'm enjoying him. Oh yeah, no, he's, he's doing, uh, watching anybody. So torture Scott Walker, Jeb Bush, uh, you know, that I, I can't say that I, I dislike him for that. There's many things I dislike him for. He is a miserable person who should never get anywhere close to being president. And yet he, he is performing a sort of service right now. Oh, definitely. Um, definitely. Because, there's, because, because Jeb has these very distinct, besides the name, these distinct weaknesses. Look, if you're, a, if you're a, a member of the Bush family, you better be the George W. member who's spitting tobacco on themselves and clearing brush and wearing your goofy hat and thinking that you're tough and being an evangelical or at least a fake one. I mean, that's, you know, being a, a, a sort of more of a, a mainline Protestant guy, you know, uh, with glasses doesn't play in the, in well, the Republican Well, it's also, part. I mean, look, the bottom line is, I mean, it would have been fascinating to see uh, in, in this day and age. I mean, the Republican Party is basically, this is the project that the uh, that the, they've been working on for for twenty some odd years, and it's just gotten out of hand. And Donald Trump is just sort of fitting the bill. And I think he very shrewdly uh, called uh, Jeb Bush at the end of that thing. You're weak on this. You're weak on that. And he's basically just saying you're weak.